Flash News and today we have a very special guest for you. Her name is AC Hatter, the author of Callum Fox and the Mousehole Ghost. So why did you become an author? I always wanted to write, so I've always known that I had stories in me and I love telling stories and reading stories and writing stories and so it was only really a matter of time until I, I wrote a book. Um, and then um, recently, so last summer, I had Callum Fox and the Mouse or Ghost published and uh, that's my first book and I'm absolutely really excited about having it out there. Okay. Um, well, how long have you been an author? Okay, well I've been writing for um, stories that have been published probably for about the last 10 years. Um, I also have another job, so I also work, work in, uh, as an HR manager in industry. Uh, but I've been writing starting as a sort of a hobby and uh, those stories started to, to get published and get some attention and I thought this is interesting. I started to look out for a story that I could turn into a book um, and then it took me three or four years from writing Callum to having Callum published. And who is your favourite author? Well, I know it's not very imaginative, but I still love J.K. Rowling. I think she creates the most fantastic worlds and you get really immersed in them, don't you? And I just want to, well, I want to be at Hogwarts. Mm -hmm. And I love her whole way she, she writes, as well as the Harry Potter books. She's also written some other books for adults um, about a detective under the name of Robert Galbraith. And they're brilliant as well. And I want to live in that world as, as well. I like her style. Um... When you were younger, did you like writing? Oh, I loved it, Lily. Absolutely loved it. Um, I wasn't very good, I have to say, <laughs> at it. I wasn't very good at the spelling and things like that, but I was quite creative. I always had very, very good ideas, I think, what the teachers said. And so I used to love all the creative writing and the poems and all of that. And I used to do that in my spare time as well. I had loads of notebooks with ideas and little stories I'd written. And um, how old were you when you started writing? Well, I was probably, then I went off um, and built up my career, and then when I came back to writing, it was probably about 30, and I did it as an evening class, as a sort of a hobby, and things started to happen. And I thought, you know, I really could do this, and I always wanted to, so I made some time available, and I thought, I'm going to have a go at writing a book. So it's probably quite, quite late to start writing, a, uh, write, writing professionally, but um, very few people now can write uh, full-time, so you have to do it on top doing something else as well so it's good to leave it a bit later. Okay, so you put into your book because it was a it was about World War II and you must have put in some research into it. Yes I did I wanted it to feel authentic and I wanted it to be a book that you could use um, so I really wanted to understand what happened so I started by looking on the internet and you get a lot of information off the internet BBC websites really good and there's quite a few sort of stories up there that people have written about their time and I found a book written by someone who'd been evacuated to Cornwall when he was very young and it talked about his experience, what it was like on the train, what it was like when he got to the house and the family and how scared he was and that really helped me get into the mindset of Jim and understand what it would have been like and I was also able to use some family history documents because my family were down there and so I had some family diaries and I spent quite a lot of time really understanding so that when I wrote the stuff in the World War II storyline I wanted it to be as, as authentic as it could be. How long did it take you to write Callum Fox and the Mousehole Ghost? Well, it took a long time with all the research and rewriting it and rewriting. Don't just write it once and, and, and that's it. So I started writing it when my daughter was in year six and she was doing evacuees at school. And it went out last summer and then that was the summer between year eight and nine for her. So that's, I reckon I took a good three years to write it. Okay. If you were to write another book, what would it be about? Well, I am writing another book right now. So I'm writing now the second uh, Callum Fox book and looking at different his historical ghosts. So I'm researching a different historical period, but I'm not going to tell you what that is yet. Okay. It's, uh, it might, might, might change, but also I don't like to tell, say too okay. much about that until yeah. it's all finished. Okay. Yeah. What drives your inspiration? I get inspiration from the other things that I read and write all around me not read and write, so I read and, and um, watch and see. So sometimes I can be watching um, a, a movie for adults, say, and I think, well, that bit's really good. I like that. I wonder if that would work for children. So sometimes I'm reading something else or watching something on the television, or I see something in the news or in a museum or something, and I think, well, that'd be interesting. I wonder if I could get that into a children's book. And then it gives me an idea, and off I go on, on that. 
I think the more you read and the more you see, um, that's where you'll find your inspiration. What inspired you to write Callum Fox and the Mausoleum Ghost? Um, when my daughter started studying evacuees at school, I wanted her to read a book about evacuees set in the war and um, she didn't want to at all. She said, no, I want something that's funny, I want something that's fast and has got adventure and I want it to be about children like me now. I don't want to read anything boring and old. Uh, and at the time I was reading a time slip book where um, there was a modern day murder mystery but you also got to see how the, how the woman had been murdered in two different times and I thought I wonder if I could do that for children if I could take uh, a historical storyline and a modern day storyline and integrate them into one story and tie them all up neatly at the end and I thought I'll have a go at that and that's where it came from. Why did you write your book with the World War II theme? Because at the time, all primary school children had to study World War II, and I thought that's a good in. Also, it's something I know a little bit about, because my parents are of the age that they were in World War II, and um, I had a lot of information about that. So I thought that's quite good, because it's still a sort of living history. We can still talk to people who were there at the time, and I find it quite an interesting time period. Why did you set your book in Cornwall? And my family come from Cornwall, so I know the area really well and it's beautiful, really lovely. And it's the kind of place where if you went there, you could believe in ghosts in Cornwall, I think. I don't think you can believe in it quite so much in Beaconsfield, really, mm. can you? It's all too busy, busy, busy. But somewhere like there, you can imagine a family might stay there for 70 years and you'd have multiple generations of the same mm. family still living in the harbour. It looks like it used to look 100 years ago. And I think that's the kind of place you might see a ghost if you were going to see a ghost at all. What inspired you to be an author? I've always wanted to write, so I've always got half an eye out thinking, I wonder if that would make a story. I just love writing it, so I like the creativity of it. And the people, what people want to read my books, that's even better, but I'd write them if nobody read them. Thank you for coming. This has been Joe, Billy, Jay and Toby, Polly and Lily interviewing AC Hatter at Smash News.